Hi, you're watching Bike Routes of Brum, a channel dedicated to finding safe cycle routes across Birmingham. So today's video is going to be a little bit different to the type that I usually make. I've been watching quite a lot of cycling content over the last year or so on YouTube and one of the channels that I've really come to enjoy is one called Shifter. And he's created a game along with Jason from Not Just Bikes as a way to grade cities on their bike friendliness. Um, this game is called Plus One and Minus Two and the premise is pretty simple. You give a plus one for every good piece of cycling infrastructure that makes cycling easier, more appealing for people. And you give a minus two for anything that's bad or makes your life more difficult as a cyclist in the city. So the thought being that those places with good infrastructure would have a positive score and those with bad infrastructure would be negative. Um, they picked a ride of about 10 kilometres or 6 miles to do si a simple household errand which was going to the hardware store and then they filmed their routes and graded them. So I figured it'd be a good idea to try this game out in Birmingham. Now I live in South Birmingham so I decided to try and find a DIY shop in the South and ended up choosing home base in Selly Oak. So Anyone who knows where that actually is, uh, they'll know it's not 10 kilometres out of the city. So I had to extend the route out and jiggle it around a little bit. Uh, so it's definitely not the most direct route from the city centre to Sally Oak. Uh, but I do think it actually does a pretty good job of covering the different types of bike infrastructure that we have in the south of the city. Um, I mean, if you're interested in cycling to Sally Oak home base from the city centre, you can actually pretty much do it uh, without going on the roads once you get onto the A38 cycle route. Uh, and I actually put a route, a direct route to it in the uh, in the comments below. And just before the video starts, I'll add a caveat that this is just meant to be a bit of fun. And I'm pretty sure that my scoring is uh, pretty contradictory in places. So don't take it too personally. So we're off to a great start with our first minus two. The shared pathway from Chamberlain Square to Hill Street um, sharing this with the Christmas market just means that we have to dismount um, so whenever the Christmas market's on it just really shows how ineffectual these kind of shared spaces can really be so Hill Street's okay to cycle down as it's one way but we've got a little unprotected cycle lane that goes against the traffic which I suppose is better than nothing However, there's often times when part of the road's closed and cars are told just to drive through it with no regard of where cyclists go. Um, it's not really fit for purpose to be honest, so I'm going to give that a minus two. And I'm going to give another minus two here. Um, there's plenty of room along here for a bi-directional cycle lane of some sort of description. Uh, instead, we've got absolutely nothing. Luckily, it's 20 miles an hour along here, so it's not actually too bad to cycle along. But infrastructure wise, there's just nothing. We've got the first positive bit, a uh, nice little exit for cyclists to go straight ahead as this part of Hill Street's one way, so plus one. But then we get a minus two for the unprotected cycle lane going against the traffic and next to a junction where cars often poke out blocking the lane like that orange car there. Um, I'm then going to give a plus one for the protected bit of cycle lane here, um, at least it's something. But then I'm going to take off minus two for the fact that there isn't a cycle lane going the other way going to give it a plus one for the bi-directional protected cycle lane but that swiftly becomes a minus two for placing a monument right at the end of this lane this whole bit's just a bit of a mess um, it's a great monument um, but I'm just not sure why it's not in the center of the square and another minus two for just having this as a shared space um, it gets heaving here occasionally and you know you have to get off your bike so yeah not great infrastructure and I'm actually going to give another minus two here for um, this little bit. There's definitely space to put some sort of cycle lane along here. Um, at the moment, we've just got a crappy sign that basically indicates that cyclists can go in both directions. Luckily, it's not a busy bit of road, but come on, there's definitely space. But here, there's a cycle lane for bikes going against the traffic. So this is good, plus one. So we've got our own little light to get across the junction here rather than having to rely on a series of toucan crossings. Uh, that's pretty good, so I'm going to give that a plus one. But 
the wait to cross it is too long and the time <laughs> it's really like a blink and you'll miss it type of light and this encourages people to be a bit rash and just go across the junction on a red light which isn't safe so I'm going to give it a minus two as well. Now it saddens me that I can only give this bit a minus two. It's one of the worst bits for cycling along the old NCN5 route that we're going along. These unprotected lanes on a busy road are just crap to cycle along. Uh, luckily traffic is backed up here usually so it's not too bad but it's just crap. In fact I'm going to give this junction a minus two as well. This junction is lethal to cycle past. Cars come flying out of Rentham Street without looking and it makes it dangerous. Adding to this, people turning left out McDonald Street and not looking properly, uh, they can almost take you out as well. That bit could have been so much made so much better by putting bollards in the middle of Rentham Street and stop people using it as a cut through to avoid the ring road. That's rant over, but it's just crap. Minus two. Do you know what? Whilst I'm at it, minus two for Gooch Street as well. There's no infrastructure here at all. Just banging up a 20 mile an hour sign doesn't make it any better. And all you've got to slow cars down is on this long straight road are just some crappy speed humps that you can easily drive over. Um, the only positive here that is the way out of Highgate that we'll come to is uh, sort of controlled and this limits the amount of cars coming down here. But yeah, minus two. I'm going to give it a plus one here for a separated bike bit here that puts us slightly out in front of the buses giving us a head start over the middle way. Um, it's not as pronounced on this side as it is coming the other way but at least it's something and in the times that I've come up next to buses it has actually worked. And I'm going to give a plus one here for an actual separated bike lane. Um, if I was to design it, I'd consider swapping the pedestrian part and the circle lane part out as it seems to often have people walking in it. As you know, people naturally want to step as far away from the road as they possibly can be. But you know what, overall it's something. Plus one. I am however going to give this bit a minus two here just for the overall state of this bike lane. Um, it clearly hasn't been resurfaced in such a long time and roots are starting to break through which just makes it really uneven. Um, the grass often encroaches on the cycle lane as well and it's just, it's just not well maintained at all. give a plus one here for the little modal filter that allows bikes and pedestrians onto Cheddar Street but not cars. And I'm going to give another plus one for these little chicane filter things that they've put here to slow cars down. Would have been really easy just to do nothing but it does actually make a difference in slowing people down. Uh, if you want to have 20 mile an hour zones this is a much better way of ensuring people actually drive slower rather than just putting up a sign. So yeah plus one. And I'll give plus one here for this little filter. Uh, it does a really good job of slowing cars down who are coming into the road and you know, it, it discourages people from using this road as a rat run. So yeah, good. And plus one for this little bike path that helps us to avoid the junction and come up to the Toucan crossing safely. But I'm also going to give it a minus two for the fact that there's never any enforcement here and any time that there's a cricket match on it just gets filled with cars. So I'm going to give it a plus one for an actual protected cycle lane. Uh, this was just a normal box standard car lane before so it's great that they've turned this into a proper bi-directional cycle lane and you know what I'm actually going to give this whole another bit a plus one. Um, this route links the Ray Valley route to the A38 cycle lane and it links them up with one of the country's biggest cricketing venues. 
So regardless of what I think of some of this bit, um, having a safe cycle route encourages people to actually cycle to venues and uh, it takes you to places that you'll actually want to go to. So yeah, plus one. But there'll be a minus two here. The fact that pedestrians and cyclists have to give way to basically the entrance to a car park shows that the priorities are all wrong here. And we're going to give a minus two for this whole bit now. It's so stop start here, it really slows you down. It'll just encourage more people to cycle in the road, which will just piss more drivers off who will just see an unused cycle lane and bikes not using it. This whole part probably should have been on the other side of the road. I guess, you know, it's right by the quickie round. I can see why not. But instead we have to pause at this junction and then cross another set of lights. It's just, yeah, not great. I'm going to give a plus one here for having our own set of lights. Um, a woman was actually killed on this junction several years ago and to the city's credit they've actually worked to make this a much safer junction to cross. Um, also if you're actually cycling on the road you've got your own lights as well which is you know, really good. I'm not actually going to give a plus or minus here, I just wanted to comment on how weird it is that this cycle lane is elevated from the pavement, it's a really strange setup and again it just seems to encourage pedestrians to walk in it but you know, it's separated, whatever. Yeah. And I'm going to give a minus two here for the mess of crossing this junction to the A38 cycle lane. You have to squeeze your bike onto this tiny little island, then try and cross again, and then once you're on the other side, you have to shuffle back to see if your light's green, so you can, if you're going south. It's just a really bad design here. And we're going to give another plus one for a safe segregated cycle lane. I've talked enough about this lane in other videos and you can watch a full journey along it in the video that I've linked above. I'm going to give a minus two for this little junction though which means we're going to have to give way to access to a car park. It does happen to be the car park of one of the most prestigious ballet schools in the country and so maybe the cynic in me thinks that this might have been some sort of compromise to get the lane actually built past it but yeah, what do I know? Now I'm going to give a plus one here for having a set of lights that automatically detect cyclists and changes to let you through but I'm also going to give it a minus two as it isn't always particularly great or quick uh, as you can see with the empty road here and it frequently stops working. Right, I'm going to give this a plus one as well for a good use of the verge in between the two sets of lanes. It really makes it a pleasant route to cycle along, especially in the autumn. Uh, I'm just going to let this basically run to the end of the route. Um, I don't really have much more to say about this bit of the cycle route. I just I really like it. I'm going to give a minus two here because the route now basically just becomes a shared use path which isn't great um, it's good that there are lines on the path but it does narrow it and just puts cyclists in conflict with pedestrians
going to give it a plus one here for the mark cycle lane letting you go against the one-way system set for cars this is pretty good and another plus one for it kind of being protected as well makes you feel safer using it um, plus one again for the protected cycle lane here it's not the best by any stretch of the imagine but it does go both ways and works pretty well along this bit and now this is where it all falls down a bit minus two for the fact that cyclists going uphill now are forced onto the pavement for the rest of this uphill segment and another minus two for the cyclist dismount at the crossing sign it's the laziest way of building a junction for cyclists basically just making you get off and push the bike And now minus two for this weird part where there's a cycle lane on the other side of the road now but it only appeared after Healy Road which makes me think it's only for people coming that way to use. There's no safe way of getting to it from the pavement. I think you just meant to carry along along the pavement but I went over and cut through the traffic just to kind of make a point of how weird it is. Do you know what though? I'll give it a plus one for the fact that it's actually protected. But I'll give it a minus two here for the fact that it just comes to an end and forces you either into the junction with all the cars or to hop up onto this shared use pavement uh, and try and cross over. So I'm going to give this a plus one for having our own set of lights crossing diagonally across the junction. That's pretty good. Um, but minus two for the fact that the light is not on nearly long enough for a lot of people to cross on, which given how busy this bit can be, it's, it's not great. We'll go plus one for the nice blue segregated route again. Why not? I'm feeling generous, so I'll give a nice little plus one for this zebra crossing for bikes and pedestrians. And finally, I'm going to give a plus one for one, having the bike rack in the first place and two, having it quite near to the front of the shop. So the overall score that I've given this route comes out to a measly minus 25. Um, <laughs> I wasn't really adding this up until I started editing the video just now. So it does seem a little bit harsh for what I actually think is a pretty good route if you're on a bike compared to if you're just you know, on the road. But like I said, the aim of this really is to just point out some of the good bits, some of the bad bits. So uh, please don't have a go at me if you really strongly disagree with the score. Um, I'm going to pop this score into a leaderboard and try to compare it to other places that I end up cycling in. Um, I've got a video that I filmed back in October of cycling in London that I've been trying to work out what to do with. So this seems like a good way to compare Birmingham with other cities. I hope that you enjoyed the video and if you think that I'm completely wrong or you want to share any of your thoughts, uh, please comment down below. Thanks again for watching.